G'day everyone, how are we? Hope you're all well. Thursday, the bloody 28th of March at 1.33 in the afternoon. You're probably thinking, Buck, what are you doing on doing a live feed at this time of the day? Just want to give you a quick update, guys, on Kaz and some um, some exciting news that I've been told I'm allowed to say. Legends, if you're watching, get ready for this news. <laughs> I'll wait for someone to come on. They're probably thinking, Buck, you do want to fill the maniac. Why are you on it, buddy, on Thursday? We'll wait for someone to come on. That's just, um, clock just started ticking over again. I wonder what happened then. Anyway, we'll see how we go. Wait for a couple to get on. If anyone does come on, well, I've got a bit of an update for you. Kaz just sent me a little video, everyone. Hey, Brent, how are you, mate? So Brent's on. Hope you're well. I'll wait for a few more to get on, and then I'll just do the news. Jace Parry, g'day, mate. I'm going well. Lukey Alexander, g'day, Hine. How are you, mate? Hope you're well. Uh, Koala Man, 33. How are you, mate? What a great name that is. Joshy Hatch, g'day, mate. Oh, my nose has got itchy again. I went live, and my nose just started going itchy straight away. Steve Wilkes over there in Mexico. G'day, mate. How are you? Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Jack Turtle. Hope you're well too, mate. I hope you're well. I hope all your treatment's going well. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm going good, Hine. Going real good, mate. Been out, um, took a young fella out this morning, young Sammy. Sammy Wilson, his name is. And he went out. I've been mentoring him for a, oh, quite a few weeks now since I started. And he went out for, went for his peas this morning. He got them first pop. And um, he got his pea license this morning, so it was good. Put a photo up on Facebook of that. So it's, it's a big step for a young fella, isn't it, getting their licence and getting their pea plates, and they become a bit more independent then, which is absolutely fantastic. Helps them get a job, do all that type of stuff. It's a it's a big stepping stone in life. All of us here have probably been through it, uh, get, going from your learners and then getting your peas and being able to go out and see the real world by yourself. Um, you know, so... He still got. I told him this morning. Still got a lot of learning to do. Just because you're on your peas doesn't mean you know it all. You keep learning. You keep learning. I'm still learning. You know, I'm bloody nearly sixty guys, and I'm still learning. G'day, Steve. How are you from Saw Adventures? Lukey Reed, I got some good news, mate. I got some good news. Jenny Holden, g'day. Hope you're well. Steve, hope you're going well over in Mexico, mate. Hope you're going well. I still haven't got a photo of me patches over in Mexico yet, Steve. Um, Harvey Dog Run Around, uh, Happy Easter, yep. Oh, I went down to the shopping centre this morning just to buy a few things, and my God, Coles was, I couldn't get a parking spot in Coles. I had to go out and park on the street. Everyone in there getting their Easter eggs, and they must have about six or seven staff just putting Easter eggs up. Unbelievable, the amount of Easter eggs that were going up. They couldn't keep up with the crowds. Everyone's shopping trolleys were full of Easter eggs and that. Obviously, everyone was small kids and that. Um, Lukey saying, I've spent the morning working on the caravan before our family school holidays trip. Good stuff, mate. Hope it goes well. Hope it goes real well. Uh, cancels the Easter camping trip. Sick of wet gear. The sunshine state, my ass. Hi, you left far north Queensland to get away from the rain. What's happened? It's wet up here, mate. It's like... Still grey, grey. I was going around with Sammy this morning. I took him for a 45-minute drive just to get him ready for his driving test. And we were driving around and belting rain the whole time. And I think when he went for his driving test, the rain stopped. Uh, it was just sprinkling a bit. Um, g'day, Lorna. How are you? Hope you're well. Achuka's, Achuka is out of control as well. Wow. Well, I love that town. I was really taken with Achuka and Mo Moama or whatever was the uh, the town on the New South Wales side. What a good part of the world there. Really nice part of the world on the Murray River. I'll be back down there again, I'll tell you now. That uh, caravan park at Moama on, on the New South Wales side, just across the bridge there, that's a very, very good caravan park. Uh, it got flooded badly. And I'll tell you what, some some of the best fire pits there, massive big communal fire pits that you can sit around, really, really good. Um, now, let's hope it's not piss and rain for everyone for Easter. I know Easter 
Easter weekend's the big one where everyone gets to go out camping. Uh, it's sometimes it's about the only time of the year people get to go camping. When my kids were small, we always went camping over Easter uh, when we we're over in West Aussie, we went down the dwelling up and that, and always took the kids. And I remember Lauren as a young girl, we'd hide Easter eggs in the in the bush and Lauren would get up Sunday morning and um, say, the Easter bunny's been, and she'd be going around in the bush finding all the Easter eggs and, and everything in the bush. It was it made the camping trip that it really did. Uh, Saxon Overland's on. G'day, mate. How are you? Hope you're all well. You're probably at work. Ray Newman. G'day, Buck. Hope you and Roz have a great weekend. Thanks, mate. Yeah, if it stops raining, we will. Got the... Um, uh, when's Bubs due, Lorna? The 1st of... The 1st of May. Only about five weeks. I spoke to Lauren yesterday. Lorna, I think you may have asked that on the live feed the other night, and I didn't see the question until I watched the replay, mate. So... I think it was you that asked the same question the other night. First of May, so only about five weeks away. Um, Lauren wants the little girl, it's going to be a little girl, to be born on the 4th of May. And the reason for that is, is that the baby's great, great grand mum, uh, Nan Dingle, Yvonne Von Dingle was uh, Lauren's grand mum. No, Lauren's great grandmother. So this baby... Um, I'll tell you what the the two names the, down the two names. Uh, this little baby, Nan Dingle. I, I called Nan uh, Nan Dingle myself. Uh, she's passed away now. Nan would have been a hundred years old on the fourth of May. So Lauren's hoping that the baby's three days late and that the baby's born on the fourth of May, which would be exactly one hundred years after her great great grandmother was born, Nan Dingle. So wouldn't that be fantastic if the baby comes on the 4th of May, a um, hundred years to the day after Nan Dingle was born. Uh, Nan was Lauren's great grandmother and what a, originally from Lewisham in Tasmania, Nan Dingle. She uh, moved over to West Aussie uh, eventually, but yeah, when Lauren was a little girl, we went down to Tassie a few times and stayed with Nan at Lewisham. And Nan's husband, Trevor, Trevor Dingle, he's got a sign at the Lewisham Hotel there in Tassie. And um, it's got, uh, um, bloody, what was, what did I say his name was? Friggin' hell, my memory, I just said it. And it's, um, it's got Trevor's, Trevor's Corner in the thing. If anyone ever goes into the Lewisham Hotel in Tasmania, have a look around and see if there's a sign still up in the main bar there in one of the corners, and it says Trevor's Corner. Trevor Dingle, which was Nan's husband. I knew Trevor as well. He's passed away, obviously, now as well. So, um, Jace Parry saying he's over the rain. Yeah. Remember at the start, they said it's going to be El Nino or whatever, which is the drought season? It's been a wet summer. You, If you reckon the rain's been bad down south, you should be up here. We're in the wettest part of Australia, like Tully's. Tully's just been flooded for months. Like, you drive through Tully and there's water on the side of the highway, as far as you can see. It's ridiculous. Um, steamy hot. Yeah, it's still, it's not too bad here. When you get out mow the lawn and that, obviously, you start sweating up. But um, send some down to Pucker Punyal. It's, it's, yeah, Pucker can be very dry. It's like a cricket wicket. Yeah, Pucker was a shit hole, wasn't it? I hated Pucker Punyal. An absolute dry shithole, pucker, and freezing cold. I went on exercise leopard crawl when we had leopard tanks. Uh, exercise leopard crawl, 1986. And I remember being in the gun pits in that at night, doing gun picket, and it was just bitter, bitterly cold. Like, just shaking, shivering uncontrollably. It was that cold there at pucker. And that was in March. It wasn't even in winter time. It was bullshit. Um... No rain in South Aussie. Tell you what, a lot of the rain from north is going down into Lake Eyre and that um, apparently Lake Eyre's running again. It's usually dry. Apparently Lake Eyre's full again, which is good, isn't it? It all brings all the wildlife and the birds and everything. 37 degrees in Thailand, but the beer's ice cold, and that's why I'm going. <laughs> You're going over to Thailand, mate. Good stuff. Watch out. Watch out over there. They put bloody ice in your beer. You order a beer over there and they put it in a glass with ice. It's like dead set. 
friggin' ice in your beer. Like, I remember went over there once and they put ice in. I said, what are you doing? I said, putting a, chilling the beer down. I said, you don't chill it down like that, but that's how they drink their beer in Thailand. We went to Nongi's village one night, me and Gigi and uh, Gigi's wife, Nongi. We actually stayed in Nong's village for a couple of nights. And they don't have fridges and all. Well, back then, they didn't. And, yeah, they uh, managed to get a bag of ice from the local shop down the road. And um, we were sitting around. They just had a bag of ice and hot beer. And they just put a handful of ice in the glass and, and the beer in. And she'd froth up. But, anyway, it was better than nothing. Yeah. So I've got some news, guys, from Kaz. I've put it up on my Facebook page. Kaz goes in for an operation at 5 o'clock today. He is not well, everyone. Kaz is not well. From in the trenches with Kaz. They don't know what's wrong with him. Like, he's got Crohn's disease and he's got internal problems. He shits blood all the time. And now his body's breaking out into these massive um, boils. And uh, it's like... It's like he's got an infection inside. It's a bit like um, uh, septicemia or whatever, you know, when you get a blood disease and everything. It's like it's like uh, the exorcist. Everything's trying to come out of his body. Uh, it, it's horrific. Anyway, he's going in for an operation at 5 o'clock today. And as he said, he's um, getting double penetrated like a sailor, he reckons. Uh, they're putting one down his throat and one up his bum and going in to have a look at what's going on in there. They've done blood tests and you name it. Kaz isn't well. And I'll tell you what, I'm a bit worried about him. I'm worried about him. This is the sickest I've seen him. I thought he was sick last time he was in hospital. He's real bad this time, guys. Still manages to crack a, a crack a thing. You know what? I, sh I shouldn't say this. No, I won't. I won't say it. Kaz said something yesterday is very concerning. And it's the first time I've heard Kaz say words where he's almost given up, guys. He hasn't given up, but the way he was speaking, he he was felt like he he was almost ready to give up. That's how much it's affected him. He's been sick for years. Keeps fighting, keeps, keeps putting on a brave face. And even on the clip that I put up, he still manages to make a navy a navy joke. You know, that's what Kaz does. He always tries to, even when he's the lowest. He can still come up with a bit of, a bit of humour, and uh, we wish him all the best. And I'm trying to find out what hospital he's in, because I want to send him some flowers. As probably gay as that is for an infantryman, a rifleman getting flowers, I want to send him some flowers on behalf of the Buckaroonie community and or whatever, and just let him know we're thinking of him. So, yeah, no, Kaz will be right. He's a tough man. He'll pull through. G'day, Jennifer. How are you? Uh, so there's an update on Kaz up operation today at five o'clock. Let's hope they, let's hope the doctors and the surgeons can nut out what's going on in there, and get him on some sort of antibiotics or something that will help him because he just keeps, he's he's just had so many bad bloody things. He went to go into Sydney with his daughter and and, and her mum there one day, and he shit himself on the train, like just can't control himself, and it was shit and blood and. He's just it's getting the stage he's not going to leave the house, the poor bugger. And now he's just broken out in all these boils and it's like it's like infection and that trying to leave his body. It, it's just yeah, it's bad. It's bad. And um I'm I'm worried about Kaz. If you see this, mate, we're thinking of you. And stay strong, please. Stay strong. We're all thinking of you. I even got an email from the diddly donk from Serena today, Kane Higgins. And even Kane said, Buck, I'm worried about Kaz. I said, we all are, Kane. We're all worried about Kaz, mate, but he's a tough man and he'll bloody get through this. Um, yeah, no, don't let him give up. No, nah, Kaz won't, mate. Kaz is strong. He's been through some terrible things. When he was in the army, as we know, over in Rwanda and that, seeing babies and women and children getting hacked to death with machetes and all that, um, he's a tough man. He, he's been through... He's been through things that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. So, and you know, Kaz always trying to help others, always trying to help these young kids get into the military, get into the army or the navy or the air force. He he tries to talk them into going into infantry because he's so proud. He did twenty four years in infantry, and a lot of young kids have joined the army because of Kaz. Joined the defence force. He should be on their payroll. He does a very very good job. He's always always thinking of others. So. Um, yeah, so no, it's all right. He'll uh, he'll get through. He's stronger than this. He will make it. Yeah, I know. But we all 
sometimes things happen to us medical medically wise that are out of our control and it doesn't matter how how strong you are so anyway i just wanted to give you an update on kaz guys keep your fingers crossed for him if you can get on in the trenches with kaz in the messenger go on facebook in the trenches with kaz send him a message go on to my facebook page send him some well wishes through my page and let him know we're thinking of him um same as we've got a couple other people in the community battling cancer at the moment. So we're thinking of them as well. And Gail and Jack, we're, we're thinking of you and we're all one big community and we all stick together and that's what it's all about. So well wishes to everyone doing it tough out there. Um, and Kaz is at the moment. We all go through things. Roz is home. Raf has just gone running down the stairs. Yeah, so... Ros will go, why are you live? I'm giving everyone an update on Kaz, Ros. Huh. I think I hope it's Kaz. Either that or it's a burglar knocking me house off while I'm on doing a live feed. I'll get off the live feed and there'll be nothing left in me house. The lounge chair, TVs will be gone. So I've got some more exciting news. For anyone coming to the Legends camp, I've got some exciting news. Speaking of diddly donks, we're talking about the diddly donk from Serena. Well... There's another diddly donk, and he lives in Launceston. Can anyone think of who I'm talking about? Yeah, hey, Ros. Can anyone think of who I'm talking about? The diddly, diddly donk from Launceston. Well, he's booked the spirit of Tasmania, everyone, and he's coming to the Legends camp. And Lukey, Lukey Reed, he's coming to the Legends camp, special guest star, guys. He, Lukey said, you can tell everyone, Buck, so Lukey didn't know if he'd be able to get on the spirit of Tasmania for the Legends camp. Well, he can, and I spoke to Teresa, um, and I said, listen, I've got a whole campsite by myself. There's only me, Roz, and Gigi, and Rafa. Um, Gigi's in a swag. Lukey's, Lukey's in a four with a rooftop tent. Can you squeeze him on my, my site? And Teresa said, yep, no worries. So I've sent Teresa your email address, Lukey, and phone number. And Teresa will obviously start sending emails out to you to um, give you all the information about the park and the campgrounds and that, Lukey. So you're booked in, mate. You're booked in on my side. I, I got. I, I was hoping that she she come back and say that you're right. I said, listen, there's only me and Gigi and Roz, and we've got a camper trailer, and they're pretty big campsites. So I'm sure we'll be able to squeeze Lukey on in his Nissan Navara with his rooftop tent. So Lukey will be. At the Legends Camp, everyone. How about that? Good news. I told you it was good news. So that's about all I wanted to say. Um, don't let him give up. Never give up. No, Newey, I won't. And we'll, I'll be keeping in touch with Kaz. He sent me that little video before. Um, you know, with Kaz, even when he's down, he's still cracking a joke. he he be right. You know, he's still fighting. So he'll never give up. And he said, mate, I've got a little girl. Kaz's got a young, young daughter. Aaliyah, uh, Kaz ain't going nowhere. He's got a little girl he needs to take care of, guys. So Kaz, not, Kaz ain't going to check out on us. Don't you worry about that. He'll fight this. And he said, if I didn't have a daughter, probably be different, mate. But he said, I've got a little girl to look after. So that's the spirit, Kaz. If you're watching, mate, bloody, you'll you'll be back to normal in no time, mate. Let's hope the, the doctors and everything there at the hospital are, are taking good care of you. Good luck with the operation today. I hope everything goes well. I hope they find out. What's going on inside that bloody body of yours, mate? Dear oh dear. It's, uh, it's something that's been plaguing Kaz for a long time now, guys. Went over to East Timor in 1999. And he reckons that's where he picked up some sort of bug. And he's been plagued by it ever since. But it seems to be getting a lot worse in recent times. So, which isn't good. But anyway. Uh, just not... Uh, I can't, Logan, I can't read that. Yeah, yes, I can. Buck, just about to knock off work for Easter break. Good on you, mate. Enjoy. I hope you're going out camping or I hope you're going to spend time with the family. Whatever you're doing, Logan, enjoy Easter and make sure all of you do out there. Have a wonderful Easter, everyone. Stay safe. You know that's the most dangerous time. Easter and Christmas holidays, the most dangerous time on the roads. I know the police are saying they're going to be out in force. Um, they should need to be. Everyone should do the right thing when they're out driving. And this bloody Greyhound bus went off the road and injured people down in Tully a couple of days ago. Um, dear, oh dear, just, you know, driving in the rain, 
were coming back from the pink concert the other day, pouring down rain and some idiot, some idiot, and I think the number plate had Chloe on it. Do you remember the number plate, Roz? That 300 series that was driving like a bloody idiot. Was it Chloe? With a K? Don't quote me. I think it was that personalised number plate, Chloe with a K. Don't know if it was a female driving or not. Just pouring down rain, bloody heavy traffic, and just someone who just could not wait. Everyone sitting on the speed limit or a little bit under, 90, 95. This one just had to keep overtaking. And yeah, we, you'd be going, you better hurry up and get into a bloody gap, mate. There's cars coming and they just get into a gap. Obviously, someone in behind him and have to, you know, slow down to let him into the gap. Just could not wait. Could not wait. And and all that does is create possible bloody head-on collisions and that. Yeah, but you always see it. There's always dickheads out there that are just impatient. How dare you sit on 95 and hold me up in the pouring rain when I should be sitting on 105? Those type of people. Hey, John, how are you, mate? Over in bloody Oregon. How are you? Hey, Buck, just heading... Uh, to bed and saw the stream. Thanks, mate. I was just coming on to uh, John Bean, everyone, um, from that that, that 143 JKRD, and we're going to have you on for a live stream one day. John's ex-Oregon police officer, guys, in the United States, retired now. Hope you're enjoying retirement, mate. And we're going to have you on for a live feed and a chat. We can compare stories about what it was like being a police officer in Oregon in the US as to being a police officer in Queensland in Australia. I think it'll be a great live feed and we both love camping. So enjoy your camping trip, mate. You live in a beautiful part of the world. Bit of snow over there, but I'll tell you what, when the snow clears, it looks absolutely beautiful. Oregon's one of those states I've always been fascinated with in America because all the, you see the Ori the big pine trees and, the, and all that and the redwood forests there in Northern California. Uh, I'd love to see that one day. It'd be absolutely fantastic. So anyway, mate, enjoy your sleep. Uh, I was just coming on to give everyone an update on a mate of a mate of mine, Kaz. He's one of the community members. Got his own thing. Ex uh, did 24 years in the Australian Army. Kaz is not well, mate. He's going in for an operation today. He's got some sort of exotic disease inside his body, and they can't kind of work out what's going on in there. So he's not well, but he's still fighting hard. And we're all wishing him the best. So anyway, mate, I'll, I'll be in touch and we'll get that live stream. Be on a Sunday morning my time, a Saturday evening your time. And I know you're retired now, mate, so you've got plenty of room, but plenty of time on your hands. Don't have to worry about you doing shift work anymore. How good is it not doing night shift anymore? Night shifts sucked. <laughs> I did 19 years of it, mate, doing night shifts, and I hated them with a passion. Uh, you just never got used to doing night shifts. I hated them. It'd take a couple of days to get over them, you know, like you'd have a, a few days off after them, but it'd take a couple of days for your body to get back into the swing of things. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, mate, all the best and uh, I'll be in touch, eh? And keep the, keep the messages coming and the photos from Oregon. As I said, beautiful part of the world over there. It really is. It's just, just fascinating. When we do the live feed, I'll get you to send me a heap of photos over so when we do it, I can bring the photos up on StreamYard and we can talk about them during the live feed, some of the beautiful places around where you live in that, mate. Um, but we did one with Slacken once, Slacken in Canada, and the whole live stream, we just talked about bears and beavers. That's all it was. It'll probably be the same. Everyone will want to know about bears and all that. Do you get bears in Oregon? I'm pretty sure you do. They're down in California, aren't they? I'm pretty sure you probably get bears in in Oregon. Um Susie's saying, I do permanent 11p to 7am, all good if I have a decent sleep. Oh, my mum used to do, when she was younger as a nurse, used to do permanent dog shifts or night shifts. Um, and mum used to like them because she, she just loved sleeping all day. Uh, I, I couldn't get into them, hated them with a passion. Uh, we only used to do three in a row in corrections because our 12-hour shifts only ever did a maximum of three. But in the coppers, we did uh, seven seven night shifts, seven midnight nights, basically, they were, uh, seven of them. And it was a long week, let me tell you. Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, just dealing with drunken friggin' idiots. And then the rest of the time was patrolling around and 
your, your quieter weekdays in the, in where I am, the, you know, where it wasn't so busy, your Monday, Tuesday nights and that, that was the time you go for a patrol, then you spend a few hours in the station trying to catch up on the reams of paperwork and then you go out for another patrol about bloody five, five in the morning uh, and get all the cars coming into work and just fly the flag, drive around, be seen when everyone's coming to work early in the morning and all that type of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Don's saying he uses a bear-proof trash can. <laughs> a bear-proof trash can. Oh, dear. I'll tell you what, don't worry about your trash can or your rubbish bin being bloody bear-proof. Make sure your tent is or your caravan. Make sure that's bear-proof. Um, there's a few uh, few horror stories. I'll tell you who loves talking about bears eating people and he's fascinated by it is Joe Rogan. Have you ever watched Joe Rogan's podcast? All he talks about is bears eating people and about how ferocious polar bears and grizzly bears and that are. Joe Rogan's fascinated with stories of animals eating people. I don't know what it is, but... Um, a bit like Andrea St. Pierre White in, in Africa, guys. You know, I'm thinking, what about the lion? You know, you're in a rooftop tent. Lions jump up there and bloody rip your tent apart and eat you. But Andrea St. Pierre White says you just got to be um, thing. I, I guess even with lions, if you've got a, a horn or bloody spray or something and that, you can you can repel them. I'd be certainly carrying a big Mark 9, John. I don't, we used to call them in the prison, big Mark 9 OC spray. Uh, over there, you'd probably call it bear spray. We used to call it crim spray. <laughs> or bug spray. Yeah, big Mark 9 OC spray, mate, for the bloody grizzly bears. I think the black bears are okay, aren't they? They just come in trying to steal your food. But if you get the big grizzlies coming in, uh, that'd be uh, your arsehole doing 50 cent, 5 cent thing, mate, if your grizzly bear come into your campsite. Let me tell you. I don't know if I'd like a lion or a grizzly bear. What would be the worst way to go, a lion or a grizzly bear? I'm not sure. I reckon the most violent bears, but are polar bears. They reckon they are violent. Polar bears are the most dangerous bears of all uh, up there in northern Canada and that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a great chat with John. Yeah, and um, give us a thumbs up, guys, if you want to see that live stream with, with John over there, ex-Oregon police officer. I think it will be fantastic. Um, talk about police and just talk about... America and, and Australia in general and camping in America and camping in Australia. And that John obviously watches our channel, so he probably knows all about it. I know a lot of Aussies out there are fascinated. John, they'll be fascinated with how you camp and where you camp and our bears and that uh, are real danger. I mean, over here, we go on about snakes and all that. At least when you zip your swag and shit up, mate, snakes can't get in there. But they are a real danger. I mean, there's a chance that you're collecting firewood and that. There's a real possibility you can get tagged by a snake down here. Uh, if you're camping by the water up in northern Australia, we know how bloody dangerous it is. Not being crop wise in this thing, be crop wise in crop country. You get too close to friggin' waterways up here in northern Australia camping, and you can get dragged out of your tent at night by a crop. And it's happened. It happened up in Bathurst Bay. Bloke was camped hundreds of metres back from the water. And a big four-metre soldy come up and bloody grabbed him out of his tent and started dragging him down to the water. And his grandmum come out with a rifle and shot it in the head. There's pictures of that on YouTube somewhere. Bathurst Bay or one of those bays up in Cape York. Um, yeah, there's there's a thing on there. And, and I'll tell you what, it was a big croc, guys. Scary bloody things. Sharks, well, you've got to be in the water for a shark to get you, don't you? But crocs, they can come up out of the water and get you. So... Uh, John saying it's a little different here. Yeah, we had black bears. I used uh, I used a galil a, a galil to chase uh, my last one off. Bears are fine. Cougars not so much. Well, they, that's another thing. I do. Mountain lions or cougars um, are another danger, aren't they? Coyotes, I guess, mate. I don't know if coyotes are a danger to humans, but they certainly are to other animals. If you take your dog out camp, that's all the stuff we can talk about, mate. When we do our live feed. Uh, used a galil, which is a rifle, guys, an Israeli rifle from memory, to chase the last one off. Hey, the trouble, most of us don't have guns down here in Australia, mate. Um, we are allowed to own them, but the majority of Aussies, we don't own guns anymore. 
I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but um, yeah, a Galil to chase the last one off. Someone put a picture up the other day of the Mary River up in the Northern Territory. He put a drone up, and I'm not kidding, guys. There were hundreds of crocodiles. He flew the drone along the banks of the Mary River, and it was scary how many crocodiles were in on the side of the thing. It was infested with them, and big ones, big solies. You would not go anywhere near the water in the Northern Territory. It is riddled with saltwater crocodiles. Baltimore Bridge was a mess, Nags. Yeah, I, I sent uh, John a message about that. It could have been worse, as he said. Luckily, the ship the ship lost power, apparently, got a mayday, a mayday off, and they managed to shut the bridge down so that the people that were killed on the bridge were, I think there were six missing. They found two bodies in a submerged car this morning. Poor buggers, rest their souls. What a terrible, terrible thing. Um, so there was only a small number of people on the bridge. If that ship didn't get the mayday call off and, and inform the people... I don't know how, but they managed to block the bridge off be just before the ship hit that pile on. The ship lost power, apparently. Uh, so I'm still waiting to hear the full story, but it could have been a lot worse. And we had a similar incident in 1975 when a ship ran into one of the pylons on the Tasman Bridge down in Tasmania, and we lost people there. There's, you look up Tasman Bridge disaster, 1975, and the bridge is like that. There were cars cars hanging over the edge a couple of cars hanging over the edge where the bridge split absolutely scary shit same thing happened in baltimore which is in maryland uh the state of maryland in on the eastern side of the united states not far from washington guys i went and google mapped it and there's like a big big channel type thing and a, it's quite a big bridge too i'd hate to think what the replacement cost of that'll be but that's nothing compared to there's some people that have lost their lives because of it, which is an absolute bloody terrible thing to happen. It looks like it was just um, the ship lost power, guys, So and they got a mayday call off and, and managed to warn people. So it was just one of those horrible bloody things. But anyway, to the families of those people, uh, we're thinking of you. Anyway, John, go to bed, mate. Don't stay up for the rest of the thing. I'm not going to be on much longer. Looking forward to doing that live feed. I reckon it's going to be an absolute cracker, mate. Talking about cougars and bears. That's what it'll end up talking about. Well, um, your cougars and bears versus our bloody uh, brown brown snakes and taipans and death adders and, and crocodiles. <laughs> we'll see which is the most dangerous one. Um, yeah, so speaking of which, there's a campsite over on that my son Phil. We've camped over there, Makushla on Hinchinbrook Island, and that place is riddled with death adders, guys. Friggin' death adders everywhere. you got to be real careful there. Absolutely. And Makushla Campground is actually fenced off for crocodiles, so crocs can't come up into the campground while you're sleeping. They've actually got a crocodile fence there. Mind you, crocs can crawl over, probably crawl over that fence, but it's better than nothing anyway. Speaking of spiders, mate, I was topping up the dog water the other day out in the shed, Rafa's water out in the shed, and a bloody dirty big spider was come. It must have been under the, I don't know where it was, but when I started filling, and it came into the shed, it was a decent size, and it was a bloody, I was trying to work out what it was. It wasn't a funnel web. Apparently, there are funnel webs up here in far north Queensland, forest funnel webs or something. It looked like it might have been a trap door or something. It was a big, angry looking bastard. It was a, anyway, didn't survive my size 12 bloody rubber plugger, guys. Me thong or my flip-flop. John, we call them thongs here, mate. Thongs are totally different over there. I didn't hit it with me. I hit it with me flip-flop, me rubber flip-flop. If I said hit it with me thong, John be scratching his head going, what, he took his undies off and smacked it on the head. It was a dirty big grey thing, and it was a horror. It looked, it looked venomous. It looked like a real nasty one. Might have been a trap door or some sort of mouse spider. I don't know what it was, but it looked like if it bit one of the, the cats or rapper, they'd be in trouble. I, I couldn't identify exactly what kind of spider it was, but it's dead now anyway. It's in snake heaven where they all belong. I don't kill huntsmen. Huntsmen look scary, but um, they're all right. I don't really kill the huntsmen and that. But this bastard, as soon as I saw it, I thought, that's bad news, that spider. It looks venomous. It looks, it looks bad. It looks like one of the ones, if you got bitten by it, you'd be in trouble. So, anyway, it copped a size 12 on the head. Bloody thing. So, anyway, 
<laughs> Kerry saying a Y front slingshot. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Lorna's got to go. Yeah, I'm going to go too. Happy Easter. I'm going to go too, everyone. Happy Easter, everyone. I just want to let you know. Let's wish Caswell, guys. He's going in for an operation at uh, 5 o'clock, probably New South Wales time, which is what? 4 o'clock here in Queensland. So, um, bloody thoughts are with Kaz. He's a strong man. He's a tough man. He'll get through this, guys. I'm sure he will. But I'll tell you what, when I saw him the other day, I was worried about him. I really was. Congratulations to Sammy for getting his P licence. Sammy, if you see this, good on you, mate. Well done. Uh, passed it. He only just passed. the. I was talking to the instructor. He said, mate, and something I wasn't picking Sammy up on, when he changed gears, he was leaving his foot resting on the clutch. And if you do that, they dock your point. So you've got to change gears and get your foot right off the clutch. And I wasn't picking Sammy up on it, but he, um, the instructor said, yeah, I pinged him three times for doing that. Uh, he stalled it, reversing out of the thing. He didn't lose any points for that, but apparently he went all right. Um, apparently he was a good driver on the roundabouts and the intersections and all that type of stuff uh, in town. He did well and he passed, which is good. So the instructor let him know all the, all the areas of concern, like keeping his resting his foot on the clutch and not taking it fully off and all that. And in, and that's what something I'll do when I'm teaching the manual car. There's an auto and a manual. When I'm teaching the manual is I'll keep an eye on them. And if they're keeping their foot near the clutch, I'm going to go get your foot away from the clutch until you're ready to change gears. So anyway, congratulations, Sammy. Kaz, we're thinking of you, mate. And Lukey Reed, you're booked in, mate. Uh, Teresa got back to me. I've sent her your details. Lukey Reed will be at the Legends Camp, guys. Exciting news. He's got a spot on the Spirit of Tasmania to get up to the mainland. Good on you, Lukey. We'll see you there, mate. It's going to be good and uh, be good to see everyone. It's like everyone kind of knows you're in the community through the chat room, and it'll be a good chance for everyone to get actually meet you in real life, mate. So, um, there. All the best, everyone, for Easter and stay safe. Brent, yes, mate, absolutely. Kenny Alford. Joshy Hatch, Jenny Cameron, Mark Lavelle, Kerry Tuckwell, all you guys, Nags, Jack Turtle, everyone, have a fantastic Easter. Absolutely, bloody, if you've got the four days off, make the most of it, everyone. Make the most of it. Don't eat too many Easter eggs. And um, if you're travelling anywhere, stay safe. And if you're a bloody fish eater like I am, remember, no red meat tomorrow, everyone. Good Friday. No red meat. I've got a can of filthy old chilli tuna and rice for tomorrow. That's my thing. It's about the only religious thing I still do is I observe Good Friday. I'm Roman Catholic, a bad one, but I Good Friday, I don't eat red meat. It's just one of those things. Was it Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday, Easter Friday? And it's just, uh, if you're wondering why don't you eat red meat, it's just the Catholic's way of remembering Jesus gave up his life for us, so they say, and and it's our way of remembering and us making a small sacrifice in memory. I'm probably talking shit now. That's probably got nothing to do with that. I just made that up, but it sounded good, didn't it? It sounded good. The only time I go to church now is when someone dies and if someone gets married. That's the only time I go to church. If I went into church and tried to bloody do one of them, that roof would cave in on me. All right, Ken's in Townsville. Yes, he is. The Gidgey's in Townsville. Uh, check out his, his page, Gidgey Gorilla. He went up Castle Hill this morning and took some beautiful photos from the top of Castle Hill, looking out over Magnetic Island. It's a beautiful view there in Townsville. If you ever go to Townsville, you've got to go to the top of Magnetic Island, uh, sorry, the top of Castle Hill, and look out towards Magnetic Island. The view is stunning. It really is, especially on a nice day. All right. Uh, I hate fish, but I'm going to eat it tomorrow. I don't mind... I put a, that tuna in a thing with some rice and I kill it with vinegar and lemon and black pepper and that to get rid of that fishy taste. I cannot stand the taste of fish. It's bloody Harold Bear. That's right. God's name was Harold. Our father who art in heaven, Harold be thy name. I told that to a Jehovah Witness and he was horrified when I told him. He said, you know, God's name is, don't you? And I said, hey, Harold. He goes, no, it's not. It's Jehovah. I said, it's Harold, mate. He goes, Harold, how do you get that? I said, our father who art in heaven, Harold be thy name. And anyway, he had a bit of a smirk on his face, realised I was, he probably thought, I can't talk serious religion with this idiot. He's got no idea 
about anything. And I don't, and I don't care. If you're religious, good on you. Um, I'm, I'm not. I still consider myself a, a Christian, guys. I was brought up and went to Roman Catholic schools, some, some, not all the time. Um, yeah, so, well, I was brought up as a rock crusher, fish eater, and I hate fish. <laughs> so tomorrow, no red meat for Buck tomorrow. You won't see me on the barbecue, guys. But on Saturday, you can guarantee I'll be having a steak or something. Absolutely. All right, plastic fish tomorrow. No. Hell, yeah, get well. Lukey's saying get well to Kaz. Absolutely. All right, guys, happy Easter. Stay safe if you're driving. And, um, buddy, we'll, we'll catch you again soon. Eh? Um, I won't go in on over Easter. I'll let everyone enjoy their, their Easter holidays, and we'll catch you again next week. And I'll be in touch, John, if you're still on, mate, and we'll organise that, that live feed, mate, because I'm really keen to do it. All right. Scruffy Bollocks from London. G'day, mate. Just as I was about to sign off, Scruffy Bollocks is on, everyone. Another great YouTube name. Hope you're well, Scruffy. Hope you're well. And um, Steve over there in Mexico, hope you're well too, mate. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you again soon. I could stay on for hours, but I'm going to go. See ya. Take care, everyone. Happy Easter. Don't eat too many Easter eggs.